Hello guys, just recently, hours ago, Laravel Boost was officially launched in beta version but in public. By Ashley Hindle, it was released or announced at Laracon US on stage and now it is publicly available. And in this video, I wanted to try it very quickly for the first time and will report it what it does, how it works and what are my first impressions. And let's install Composer Require Laravel Boost and then we'll run Boost Install. OK, boost install, and it immediately detects my IDEs for AI. So on my system, on my Mac, I have Cloud Code, Cursor, and PHP Storm, all three. And I use them, actually, all of them, depending on the task. I just don't use VS Code. So OK, I agree to generate Laravel Boost stuff for those three editors and also agents, which are basically corresponding to those IDEs similarly. And I also agree with both. So they are all detected by Boost. And now what it does during installation, it is adding guidelines of the tools detected in your project. So I have Laravel version 12. I have Livewire. I also have installed Filament version 4. So Laravel Boost has detected all of that and will use guidelines for those specific documentations and those specific versions. This is one of the primary main benefits of Laravel Boost. Because otherwise you need to use something like Context 7 MCP or provide the docs somehow manually. And yeah, that's it. Installation is done. And as a result, on the left we may see subfolder cursor with rules, with one rule Laravel Boost, then subfolder Juni with MCP and guidelines, and also file cloud.md in the main folder. Let's take a look at that. So there are guidelines by Laravel Boost, including the versions. They should be here somewhere. For example, Filament version 4 rules, which was released very recently. It's already as part of Laravel Boost. Also, as you can see, Laravel 12 rules with structure like no middleware files in App HTTP middleware. Also, Flux UI, because I'm using Laravel starter kit, Livewire starter kit with Flux UI free, and so on. So the total guidelines file is almost 500, or actually more than 500 lines of markdown. Personally, I'm not sure if it's not too long because, for example, on cursor rules documentation page, they kind of have a rule or a guideline of best practice to keep it under 500 lines. And it's not even that much about lines, it's about maybe too much context, which may cost more token or maybe even pollute the context technically. But we'll see, we'll try it out. So I launched Claude and MCP slash command shows that Laravel Boost is enabled and connected. This was done during the installation. I didn't set up anything manually. And this would be the prompt. Let's try Filament and see if Boost will boost the usage of Filament and documentation. Let's see what Cloud Code is thinking. So yeah, create migrations and seeders. And this is the thing to use Laravel Boost. So this is how Laravel Boost actually works under the hood. There is a local MCP server with so called tools and one of the tool is application info. Then there are tools to get the documentation to search code base and stuff like that. And I will deliberately click just yes. So we will see all the other tools to be called. So for example, list artisan commands is another tool. And then tool by tool, Boost will help Cloud Code agent to understand the code base better. Okay, now it wants to run migration, which I will allow. Okay, it wants to make the edits to the file and I will allow it for all of this session. I will just stop on Laravel Boost accepting the MCP running. Now it updated models user Without my permission, that's good. Okay, make cedar is also allowed. Okay, and now it's trying to run make filament resource. And also it adds flags automatically to avoid me approving something. Let's try to proceed. Okay, and it is generated. To be honest, it doesn't show with Laravel Boost whether it reads the documentation of Filament 4 or not, but it seems to be doing the things Filament 4 way without me pointing to the latest documentation. And that may be the actual thing. You shouldn't maybe even care about what is happening under the hood as long as the code is correct. In this case, we're dealing with first party MCP by Laravel core team, which makes it by definition more reliable and stable. Let's run migrations. Okay. 
Let's run Cedar, accept. And again, according to the documentation and guidelines, it generates automated tests, although I didn't specifically add that to my prompt. And yes, I approve. And now it asks to run the test, which I will accept. Unknown option, no interaction. So I noticed something with the flags of running those commands. I'm not sure if it's boost or cursor or cloud code. Sometimes add the flags which don't exist or are not accurate. Another time of running pint, yes, and the task is done. And if we go to our filament dashboard, I'm logged in already behind the scenes. We have our new user item with new user to be added to the system. So it works. And the final thing I wanted to show you is that you can give feedback to Ashley and the team directly from your terminal. So not sure if it works, but Ashley told me to do it this way. Give boost feedback. Let's try it out. If it works, then Ashley himself should receive that feedback instead of me going to GitHub and creating the issue. Yes, there's a specific tool report feedback. So it added a bit more on top. And yes, let's send Ashley the feedback. Feedback shared. Thank you for helping. So this is how you can report the bugs or your personal stories. And those would probably land into some Ashley's email or database or something like that. So this is the first quick run of Laravel Boost and prompting something with it. To be honest, I was expecting to see the original article of launching Laravel Boost tells that it's documentation API, which is a great thing of 17,000 data entries. So basically chunks of documentations. And I didn't see at least on my video specifically that Boost was using documentation API, but maybe it happened under the hood invisibly. I'm not sure. At least it didn't try to use Laravel 10 syntax or Filament 3 syntax or Livewire older versions. But the main benefit of Boost, at least in my first attempts, is automated tests generated like this as part of basically any prompt at the end of the generated code. That alone could be a game changer because as humans, we are too lazy to review all the code manually. And those automated tests would do partially that work for us. But that said, the same official article, what it says as one of the last words, no matter how good the output looks, treat it as draft, run your tests, review the diffs, make code review non-negotiable part of the process. So with that in mind, I will continue using Boost for my demo projects in both Cursor and Cloud Code and maybe Juni as well. And we'll report to Ashley and Laravel team for improvements and maybe we'll contribute to guidelines. And actually those guidelines like Cloud MD, that could be a separate topic for a very long video or even a course. Why specifically those guidelines? How are they formulated and stuff like that? Let me know if you want me to shoot a separate video discussing those or any other questions you have about Laravel Boost. I'm happy to answer them in the future videos. And also keep in mind, it's still a beta version. So already hours after the release, there are already 18 issues and 10 pull requests. So it feels like the topic is hot, but go easy on Ashley and the team. Contribute to improvements and let's make Laravel Boost better together. It's a free tool for the community to help AI agents help us with Laravel better. What do you think about Laravel Boost? Have you tried it yourself? Let's discuss your impression in the comments below. That's it for this time and see you guys in other videos.